Greetings all you maniacs of the minds from the crimes and today in Warframe we are going to be taking a look at the Jat Kuzar. This is a blade and whip weapon that I feel some people don't appreciate or they just kind of ignore it. Which is a huge mistake in my mind because this thing is probably one of the most devastating weapons in the game. I know there's not really such thing as best whatever the hell but this thing is just... It's insane. So, we pull up its little thing. I love re-recording this kind of crap because, you know, game footage desyncing from its own audio. That's fun, right? So, this is an MR-10 weapon. And, yeah. You get it from the clan dojo, from the Grenier lab. And it's not too difficult to make, but it's not, like, the easiest thing to make either. I'd show you the stuff, or maybe I'll put it in, like, around here. It's not horrible, but it's not, like, easy, easy to make, but whatever. Most people just care about the stats and builds, so I have two builds. So, this is a quote-unquote normal build. I know I have Blood Rush and uh, Primed Reach, two mods that are kind of annoying to get. Blood Rush can be absolutely annoying because you have to do the spy mission on Lua and that spy mission is real bad. It's not fun and I have Prime Reach and if you don't have Prime Reach, normal reach will service you just fine. Um, This thing just it fucking slaughters. Anything under like level 130 is going to get their shit kicked in no matter what. Yeah, yeah, I know I don't I don't have viral on here, but you know what? You absolutely do not need it. Here's the thing with the Jat. Its status chance is so bad, well, so low, I would say, that it doesn't matter what element you put on this, but having something like gas actually improves this weapon a lot. So, I'm going to show this build off, but I have another build I'm going to show off too, which is this. This is a condition overload build. Now... Condition Overload is another one of those mods that is really annoying to get. Also, this thing comes with two V-polarities, which is something you can't say about the Adarex. You don't have to use any formula with this. The Adarex is a bit of a forma hog, and it's not as good as this at all. Screw off with your spin-to-win bullcrap. Seriously, if you only do spin-to-win with, like, Mirage or something... Are you having fun with the game? Are you? Probably not. But this, I'd say, has way more of a ramp up. Because once Condition Overload starts proccing like crazy, yeah, the damage numbers get stupid. But let's, let's do this build. So. Uh, I'm going to be using Neja for this. I will show off his builds in another video. So... These are level 110 Corrupted Heavy Gunners. Now, you might look at the resistances and be like, wait a minute, Clone Flesh, that's really bad against gas. Like, they, they, they're pretty resistant to gas. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> the amount of damage that this thing is going to be doing, it literally does not matter. Uh, yeah, I had to reset because I forgot to turn on Warframe Invincibility. Nezha can survive this, by the way, especially the build I'm rocking. But just to make sure... And also so they don't knock me over. Alright, let's go. So you get in here, you do this combo. Berserker activates. Red crits already. No problem. Look at that. That is stupid amounts of damage. And I can hit them... From very far away. Hit multiple of them at the same time. Remember, this is not condition overload. This thing guarantees. Pretty much guarantees. Slash procs. Can't say that about the Adarex. Oh. Also, this thing has more range than the Adarex. I have primed reach on both.
In fact, my basic bitch Zaw, uh, Zaws outperform my Adorex. So, that was not condition overload. And it was using gas. Now, if I was using, like, corrosive, they'd die even faster. If I was using viral, they'd die even faster. Now, let's switch over to the condition overload. Now, like I said, this build has a bit of a more, more ramp up. And the reason why I don't have, like, uh, corrosive or viral on this, because, you know, meta, 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 meta. Um, first off, shut up. Uh, second off is because I don't have all the melee dual stat mods. Maybe when Baro comes back, because I wouldn't mind having the rest of them. Alright, so this is the condition overload. Now, you're going to see the ramp up in damage real fast. Look how fast this thing is moving, too. The nice thing about gas is that it doesn't have health. For like six seconds like what viral does it just keeps eating their health and it makes toxin clouds that will damage enemies crap now i don't know if you're noticing the ticks of the slash but it's doing about two thousand three thousand damage per tick crap I hate this map so much. I hate the Simulacrum. You will never find these kind of just cock block holes. See the melee com the block combo. Okay. So now. As you saw, condition overload, once it gets going, because it needs to have status types affect targets, because of the way this thing of Defiled Snapdragon, the way it works, is it's guaranteeing impact and slash procs. So condition overload, as soon as you get that combo going, the pause combo, this is going to basically give you 120% more melee damage plus the gas. And if you were to have, say, heat viral or heat corrosive, that would go up to about, I don't know, 180%. So there's a reason why people praise condition overload and look, after, look for it so damn hard is because, yeah, it just kind of goes insane. It just gets ridiculous. Now, if I was totally fucking insane, once I get my Umbral Forma, I would make this thing Umbral. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give it to Nezha because Nezha is the best boy. Um, Rhino can suck it. Anyway, you could also make a Gladiator build, and I used to. Like, I have Gladiator right here. This just has more crit malt and a higher gas. Now, you might be wondering, well... How does this perform if you put a viral build on it? Let's show that off, okay? North wind. Heat viral. Okay. Oh, I also forgot. Yeah, this thing, this thing's charge attack will make it explode. It's pretty cool. It'll knock enemies down and slash proc them. Which is kind of nice. So, remember, this is not condition overload. If it was, these guys would be long dead. So yeah, this is... Yeah, the slash procs are doing 2,000 to about 5,000 damage per tick, which is an enormous amount of damage. Look at that. Hit them all the way from over there. Those are, those are 18,000... I think around 18,000 tick slash procs. Yep. This thing should be ignored. Up oh, off the map with you. I'll just kill these guys. Why not? 
Let's hit that guy. Yep. Yep, 9,000 per day. Yep. This thing should be definitely ignored. No one should use it. It's not... It's... It's... It's insane. What about corrosive, huh? Let's show off corrosive. Where's shock and touch? There it is. Oh, yeah. Now, what would happen if I would use volt with this? Well, they'd melt faster. <laughs> but uh, the problem with using volt or any... Or uh, a war cry Valkyrie is because... Um, yeah, too fast. But also use harrow. Oh, my. Good. Yep. This is actually out damaging the viral. And you might be thinking, wait, why? Viral really just like destroys their health. Yeah. But Slash is garbage against armor. And because Corrosive is getting rid of their armor, it's doing more damage with the Slash proc, not the bleed proc. Slash bleeds, uh, that's what's getting through their armor. That's, a, that's what's ignoring their armor. The Slash does nothing against armor, just like in real life. Can't cut through armor with a sword. With an axe, maybe, but you know, neither here or there. I did the bad combo. Oops. Can I get oop, 20k damage right there? And that was a headshot, probably. I'm pretty sure this thing can headshot. So. What did we learn today, children? The Jack Kazar is insanity. This thing. Okay. Anything under just like the star chart is going to get one shot by this thing. That's insane. And with the reach that this thing has, it just. It doesn't care. Now, what if I were to get rid of, like, if I were to reconfigure this a little bit and then put on, say, where is it? Organ Shatter. That would do even more damage because if I put Organ Shatter on this... That is a lot of crit malt, but really, I like having uh, the gas on it, because I hate it when it, stop that. Oh, by the way, if you're going for a gas build, you want more toxin than heat, um, because it will do more toxin damage per tick. Heat will just make the gas clouds larger. And in some circumstances, that's really, really good. If you can do both, then do both. If you put all the, the heat and uh, toxin mods onto a weapon, then yeah, you're going to optimize your gas. And it's going to just absolutely annihilate. So, that was the Jack Kazar. This weapon is, like I said, probably the most devastating melee weapon that I have my Grand Prime does, in fact, out-damage this thing per swing. But because of the Grand Prime's speed, it's so slow, even with Berserker and Fury. And once it gets going with Temple Royale, um, or Cleaving Whirlwind, either one. Cleaving Whirlwind actually out-damages Temple Royale with its spin-to-win combo. Um, not the retarded slide spin bullcrap. You, d you basically turn into a Beyblade. Uh, anyway, it does out damage it, but this thing has so much more reach. So, so much more reach. I think this thing probably has about 30 meter range, which is shotgun level. Which is insanity. So, yeah, I have a few melee weapons. Few I really love, few I'm indifferent about. No thank you. Meh. Needs more work. Pokey Stick of Doom. Uh, Atlas is Stat Stick, because I do have Atlas. Not that great. My first Zaw. So, that's how it all boils down to. 
I'll show more of my melee weapons off in later videos. And someone asked, actually was like, wait a minute, why don't you just become a Warframe channel? You seem to know this game pretty well. I could, but I mean, it's not too, too much to do in Warframe. I at least want to show off just what I have and uh, just have fun with it and everything. Anyway, next ins and outs will be of Nezha, the, the trap you see in front of you. Oh my god, I'm so triggered. Shut up. Uh, so, yeah, look out for that. So this weapon, the Jat, absolutely fantastic. If you're in a clan in MR10, you should definitely make this thing, especially if you care about melee. And if you don't even need primed reach, you don't need all the mods that I have. If you just have, like, reach, pressure point, uh, organ shatter, things like that, just, like, really basic mods, and then you put corrosive on it, it's going to service you just fine. It's going to probably kill, like, sortie level enemies pretty easily. I take this thing onto, like, bot survival, and, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't care. It legitimately does not give a shit about armor, about shields, about flesh, about life, about anything. It just kills them all. It doesn't care. Anything and everything, really. Anything that's in the room or in the near vicinity of this thing is going to get killed. That's just how it boils down to. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, in Troby, we trust.